Welcome back to our card type series. Last time we covered all you need to know about sentence cards. What they are, their pros and cons, when to use them and how to review them. Today we will follow the same formula, but this time we will cover all you need to know about vocabulary cards. So what exactly are vocabulary cards? At first glance, vocabulary cards seem like the complete opposite of sentence cards. As where sentence cards show you full sentences, vocabulary cards only show you single words. But both cards have much more in common than you might think. And the basis for both is largely the same. Much like sentence cards, the basis of your vocabulary card is the sentences you find unknown words in while engaging with your target language. Which means that the vocabulary you are learning should almost entirely come from your immersion. We don't recommend that you study vocabulary from arbitrary word lists unless you absolutely need to for a test or perhaps some other schoolwork or responsibilities. So what is the potential information that we might include on a vocabulary card? Well, the basic parts of a vocabulary card are actually exactly the same as those of a sentence card. You have a definition, a picture for context, audio for both the word and the sentence if available, and the full sentence you found the word in. The major difference is that instead of the sentence being on the front of the card, the unknown word will greet you instead. Another difference is that unlike sentence cards, including a context sentence for a vocabulary card is not strictly required, although we do recommend just adding the sentence you found the word in. Another thing is that for vocabulary cards you may often use multiple images, one for the context in which you found the sentence and therefore the word, and one for the word itself. Most often vocabulary cards are made for nouns, and using a picture of what the noun is can make it a lot easier to remember its meaning especially if the word represents an object, plant, animal or person. But we will talk a bit more about this in the when to use them section. Next up, the pros and cons of vocabulary cards. And just like last time, let's start with the pros. The most obvious pro of vocabulary cards is that reviewing them can be a lot faster than reviewing other card types. Although there are some factors that can negate this, we will talk more about this in the how to review them section. That being said, as mentioned in the last video, if you choose the right sentences or sentence fragments for your sentence cards, then reviewing them won't take much longer than reviewing vocabulary cards. But if you review vocabulary cards in the way that we will later advise, they can certainly be far and away the fastest card type to review. Although, as we will cover in the next section, they do have some pretty big cons as well. Now, another suggested pro of vocabulary cards you sometimes hear is that people report a higher ability to recall a meaning of a word and its reading for applicable languages like Japanese and Chinese while immersing. Now, this improvement in recall ability has not actually ever been quantified, but does seem to exist to a certain extent. This would be interesting to research though and is something the team and I want to look more into in the future. That being said, my friends who are also advanced learners and I haven't necessarily noticed a huge difference in the ability to recall words from vocabulary cards over those from sentence cards. Now on to the cons. Here we basically have the opposite of the pros that sentence cards had. As a reminder, sentence cards have more context are easier to memorize and deliver a stream of comprehensible input, which can be particularly valuable in the earlier stages. And as already explained in the sentence cards video, as you reach a word in a sentence, you naturally narrow down the words that could follow what you've already read. This sentence level context can make it easier to remember meanings and readings of words. In vocabulary cards, you don't have this bonus, so we'll end up having a lower retention rate and in turn at least marginally more reviews. To give you some numbers, my retention rate for mature cards in my sentence card deck is at around 87%, while my vocabulary deck sits at 77%. You also don't have a stream of comprehensible input when reviewing vocabulary cards. 
So if you're just starting out, we highly don't recommend studying with vocabulary cards only, as only seeing single words in isolation will slow down the process of building familiarity with the grammar and structure of your target language that will happen naturally during the process of studying your beginner sentence card deck in the SRS. The last major con is that vocabulary cards are not suited for learning words with multiple meanings and or various usage cases. Because the front of the card will only contain the vocabulary word. So we feel that the only effective way to use vocabulary cards is to focus on learning a single meaning or a couple of very closely related meanings associated with a given target word. question of when to use vocabulary cards is one that seems to be confusing a lot of people in the input-based learning community. And particularly within the Migaku community, it seems that a lot of people get the impression that the vast majority of your flashcards should be sentence cards. I think this happens because we tend to emphasize how important we feel that sentence cards are when learning certain types of words. But in fact, a good proportion of a learner's cards will be vocabulary cards. And for many advanced learners, vocabulary cards will end up making up the majority of the cards in their decks. Let me explain to you why this is. The website WordNet is a lexical database of the English language. The words in it are broken down by part of speech. In total, the database contains 117,798 nouns. If you combine the number of nouns, verbs, adjectives and adverbs, we can see that 75% of the words are nouns. Obviously, these numbers and percentages don't correspond to how the language is spoken and how these words are used. Through an analytical breakdown of nine literary works using an algorithm, the following percentages for each part of speech were found. And as expected, the numbers change quite a bit, with nouns making up around 20% of the words used, followed by verbs with 15%. But this doesn't tell you the whole story. If we remember that there are far more nouns in a language than any other word type, we soon realize that the verbs and adjectives we see during our immersion will repeat far more often than a lot of nouns ever do. So while 20% of the words in a given piece of content you consume will be nouns, the same verbs, adjectives and adverbs will be repeated a lot more times than a particular noun is likely to be.常に<笑> And although you obviously have to keep in mind that this analysis was made for the English language and used a limited number of literary works, so the results may not be perfectly transferable to other languages or other forms of content, but we still feel that these numbers can give you a rough idea of how a language is structured. So now that I've explained the general makeup of the words you will encounter in your immersion, in what situations do we think you should use vocabulary cards? Some of the obvious groups of words that should be used with vocabulary cards are the names of places, people, objects, plants and animals. Oftentimes these words won't even need definitions and can simply be explained using pictures. You might think that this automatically means that all nouns would fall under this category. But this is not necessarily true. A good example of this is the Japanese word shizen, which can mean something like nature, in a sentence like Wareware wa shizen no hosoku ni shitangao. Shizen no hosoku in this case means laws of nature. However, this is not the only way this word can be used. For example, in the sentence Shisen ni namida ga nangarete kita, tears flowing to nature makes no sense. In this case, Shisen expresses the idea that it happens without being conscious of it or applying any form of treatment. Therefore, Shisen is an example of a word that is likely better memorized in the form of a sentence rather than a vocabulary card, despite it being classified as a noun. In general, nouns that have a vague meaning are better learned in the form of sentence cards 
as those can aid your understanding and make memorizing the meaning much easier. We feel, once you finish studying your beginner deck, that unless you really really like a sentence that you found a concrete noun in, that you should always prefer to make a vocabulary card for it. To become completely fluent in your target language, you will ultimately need to memorize many thousands of concrete nouns, and we truly believe making use of vocabulary cards is an effective way to speed up that process. The review process for vocabulary cards is, once again, similar to sentence cards, but does differ a bit in some important ways. Your goal while reviewing vocabulary cards is to be able to read the word, generally understand what it's supposed to sound like, and have a rough understanding of its meaning. And because it is important to understand, I'm going to repeat the third point with a different example from last time. So what does having a rough understanding even mean? Let's take the word kawayanagi. This is a specific word for a tree, and you don't have to know what exact tree it is. If you can picture something similar to this, you're good to go. Or take the word kyotaku. This time we have a print of a fish, which doesn't say much. But if you have a rough picture like this in your mind's eye, you're again good to go once more. There is no need for you to remember translations or exact definitions. When it comes to the pronunciation of a word, if you remember it almost correctly, then we also recommend that you pass the card. Remember, your goal with vocabulary cards is not pronunciation practice. That sort of practice is better done once you are an advanced learner and with many, many hours spent listening to the language. It is important to distinguish pronunciation from reading, however. You will still need to accurately remember the readings of a word in a language like Japanese or Chinese. But simply that if you are a little incorrect about how those readings are pronounced, you should make a mental note and move on to the next card. If you are way off about the pronunciation of a word, however, then we recommend failing a card. Also, there is no need to read the example sentence except on rare occasions during a review and when first learning the word. This is because doing so will considerably slow you down and will reduce the main benefit gained from vocabulary cards. In fact, it will take you longer to wrap your vocabulary cards than your sentence cards if you are reading the example sentence every time you review a card. Remember, your only goal is to be able to recall a rough meaning and a pretty accurate pronunciation of the word. Any nuance and more exact usage scenarios will be picked up during immersion. With this, we are done with the second part of our card type series. I hope you found this video helpful. In the next part, we will cover sentence audio cards and everything you need to know about them. Thank you so much for watching and if you want to support us and get early access to all our tools that are still in beta, you can do so via Patreon. See you soon in the next video.